What is up, everyone? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, helping you to mix better live events, whether that is conferences, concerts, panel debates, religious ceremonies, you name it. We've got videos, tips and tricks and advice to help you get the absolute best out of your event. So today we're going to be talking about a forgotten unsung hero of live mixing. That is the pad. The pad is an elegant solution to when you have things that are too loud, right? Which is obviously something that we come across all the time when we're mixing live events. Stuff is always too loud or too quiet. It's never perfect. That's why we have jobs. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it actually is, right? Because in its simplest terms, pad is an attenuator, right? Which is our fancy word for something that turns stuff down. It's a piece of circuitry that you can engage. It's a button or a switch that you can engage, which will reduce the signal level. It'll restrict the flow of signal coming towards your mixer. And you can engage that at several different points in the signal chain. Let's dive into a little practical information on site where I'll take you through places where you might find a pad. The pad is simply a feature on the audio equipment which allows it to tolerate a higher signal level. When you send an audio signal into a piece of audio equipment, there is a certain level that it can tolerate, that the circuitry inside the microphone or the DI box a certain level that it can tolerate. If you send a level that is higher than the level that the equipment can tolerate, you will get clipping, you will hear distortion. And you might not think about this because there's no metering on your microphone. There's nothing to show you when you overload your microphone. But I can assure you that when you overload your microphone, it does not sound nice. It's not a good thing to do. And so that's why microphones some microphones, like condenser microphones, come with a pad built in. This is not all microphones, but certain condenser microphones are more sensitive to high sound levels than dynamic microphones. It's part of the, it's part of the characteristics of condenser microphones. If you're putting a condenser microphone like this on a snare drum, let's say, think about engaging the pad. You just get a little pencil, and drag that down. Maybe you have to add a little more gain later on, but if you protect your microphone from overloading at stage one in the signal chain, then you're gonna have better sound further down the chain. This is where knowledge of signal flow becomes really, really important, right? Because you need to know all the steps inside your signal chain and where things can distort. And you've gotta think about where you have meters. Just because your meter is not distorting on your mixer does not mean that you have not already distorted the signal. If you don't know how to follow the signal effectively, then you're in luck. In the description underneath this video, I will leave a link to the first module of my course on live sound, where you can learn everything that you need to know about the stage and how to work on the stage as a live sound engineer. The course will give you the skills that you need to go out and mix better gigs. You'll know what all these buttons do on microphones and DI boxes. You'll know why to use them. And better yet, you'll feel comfortable using them. And you're going to get more gigs and you're going to have more fun. Anyway, moving on. Another popular place to see pad is on a DI box. You see this one can take up to a 40 decibel pad. That is pretty serious. Sometimes when you get extremely hot outputs from keyboards or other powered instruments. The signal is just too hot when it comes into the mixer. And so using a DI box is a great way to just make sure that that signal is an appropriate level when it reaches the microphone preamp. That way you don't overload your microphone preamp before you've even had a chance to add any gain to it. Let's just answer a couple of the key questions about pads here, right? When do you use it? You use it at various points of your signal chain when the signal is too hot. Okay, so if you have a condenser microphone, which gives you a pretty hot signal to begin with, if you have that rammed up against the underside of a snare drum, which is not unheard of, you might find that you're actually overloading that microphone circuitry right after the capsule in the microphone. When you turn that signal into electricity, you're overloading the circuitry. But if you turn that pad on there, 
you can compensate for that and you get a clean signal right at the beginning. And the problem here with that is that you're never going to find that on a meter somewhere in your mixer. You're never going to see that distortion on a meter. Another place where you might use it is if you have a synthesizer that has a really hot output. Again, not unheard of. Then you can use the DI box and engage the pad on that DI box and you know that you'll get a nice reasonable leveled signal into your mixer. No distortion coming in. And the final place where you're going to find it is on a mixer. So normally on a mixer you'll find right at the top next to the preamp there will be a button that you can push in that's going to engage a pad. Normally it's 20 decibels or so which is enough to compensate for most loud signal sources. On some digital mixers, you might have to go into a menu where the preamp is to find a pad button. But a really, really important takeaway when using pads is always make sure that they're turned off before you start your sound check. Because you don't want a sound check with a pad engaged in in case you end up adding loads and loads of gain to a signal which is padded and then introducing noise into your system. Or even worse, you go looking, switching out cables because you have no signal at all from the keyboard that you just plugged into a DI box, only to find out later on that you have 40 decibels of gain reduction before you're even reaching your mixer. So then you don't see or hear anything. And we don't want to waste our time looking for that, do we? It's also pretty essential that you don't turn the pad on or off while your channel is unmuted. You should always mute your channel when you're going to mess around with cables or circuitry or anything. But if you turn a pad off when a channel is live, you really have a pretty high likelihood of screaming feedback and horrible noise or everyone just getting a massive fright from the suddenly 30 decibel louder sound that's about to happen. Hopefully you found that one useful. If you're not using pads yet, you probably have a lot of distortion in your signal. Hopefully you've been using pads already. But if not, I hope this one helped you out. If you've not been using them, Tell me how that's been going. I'm really interested to hear about that. If you're interested in getting more videos and tips and tricks on mixing better live events, then please think about subscribing to the channel. Just click the subscribe button in the corner of this video. That way you'll get notified whenever there's a new video out with new info for you to help you mix better gigs. Let me know what else you'd like to hear about as well. Always looking for suggestions for things to make videos on. As I mentioned in this video, knowledge of signal flow is really important for diagnosing problems, for example, a pad that's been left on, or knowing where to insert your pad. You can check out the link below for the first module of my workshop. In that, we talk about everything that's on the stage, but in the workshop in total, we do a lot of in-depth work on signal flow, which is super important to understand problem solving. And let me tell you, solving problems at shows is the main part of the job, and it's also the most stressful part of the job. So if you check out the workshop, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable with that problem solving part of it and you'll be relaxed and able to take on the actual fun mixing part of it. I'll see you in the next one. Hope that was helpful. Goodbye.